Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today's video is a very highly requested one, which is all about macrame. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm kind of on a macrame kick right now. And even though I have a bunch of different videos on macrame projects, I still would very much consider myself a beginner. And all the products that I picked up for this video are very beginner friendly because they use some very basic knots. And honestly, simple knots are what I'm comfortable with doing, but you can also create a very beautiful design. So I hope that you guys like these projects. I always find it so much easier to jump into a new skill or technique when you really love the project so I hope that you guys enjoy these and also are encouraged to try them out. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace so I will talk to you guys a little bit more about them later but before we get into it make sure that you like and subscribe down below and let's go ahead and jump into the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. For our first project, I'm using this beautiful terracotta macrame in three millimeter, and I absolutely love this color. I'm first cutting it to five feet long to use as our base cord. And for our working cords, I'm cutting out five 30 inch cords. Taking our five foot cord, I'm gonna go ahead and create a loop. And this is going to be our base cord, AKA the cord that we will be tying all of our knots around. So now taking one of the 30 inch cords, I'm gonna fold that in half and then place that underneath the two strands of the loop. Then we're pulling the ends through the loop to create a reverse lark's head knot, also known as a cow hitch knot. I'm going to pull this tightly and repeat with the remaining four cords. Next, we're gonna close the loop by pulling on the long base cord and this is gonna form the center, giving us a radial look. To start our knots, we're gonna take the long base cord and then move it over to the right on top of the working cord. Then I'm taking the working cord underneath and bring it over to the left side to create a number four. And we're gonna take the end of that and we're gonna cross it over the base cord making sure that it's on top and then take the end of it and pull through the loop. So now we've created one half hitch knot and we're basically just gonna repeat this step to create a double half hitch knot. So after that, we're just gonna move on to the next cord to create more double half hitch knots. So I'm gonna move the base cord over to the right on top of the cord, create another four with the working cord and then feed it through and repeat. So this whole project is essentially just wrapping our working cords on top of the base cord. And what you'll notice is that the base cord is spiraling around to create the circular shape for the coaster. So after working around all the cords once, you're gonna notice a gap. And to fill that, all we're gonna do is to cut out a shorter piece of macrame. This one is 26 inches, and we're just gonna create another cow hitch knot. Depending on how large the gap is, you can add more than one piece of cord. And as you go along, you can make these cords shorter and shorter. Creating coasters is actually the first macrame project that I tried and shared on this channel, and I think it's one of the best and easiest projects to try as a beginner. So I'm really excited to share this project with you guys because the one that we're creating today is a little bit more advanced since I'm adding in a pattern. But if you're a beginner or don't want to add a pattern, you can totally skip this part to create a solid colored coaster. Once I spiraled around about four times, I'm gonna show you guys how I made the pattern. So I'm adding in another color of macrame in this pink, which is super cute, and I made this about five inches long. Then I'm adding it on just like I did the rest with a cow hitch knot, and I'm gonna go ahead and just continue with our terracotta color for about four to five strands, and then I'm gonna add on another piece of the pink macrame. And I'm going to try and space these out as evenly as possible with five of them on the coaster. And as we wrap around onto the next row, we're gonna end up underneath the pink macrame again. So I'm taking one of the pink cords and I'm gonna create a double half hitch knot. Then right next to that one, I'm adding on another terracotta color cord with a cow hitch knot. And with the other pink cord, I'm gonna do another half hitch knot. 
So as you can see, we have the terracotta color in the middle and this creates this cute little V-shape and I really love how this looks. So we're just gonna continue that process as we work down the cord. And this pattern coaster is totally inspired by Ann Cops on Instagram. She's such an amazing fiber artist. I couldn't find any tutorials on it, so I decided to try my hand at it and I think it worked out great. I'm a newbie when it comes to using colored macrame, but I think it's just so fun and vibrant. I will list all the supplies that I'm using for each project down below. And if you already have a cream colored macrame and don't wanna buy more, you can always dye it naturally at home to create your own colored macrame, and I will link a tutorial down below as well. Once we got to about four inches in diameter, we're gonna go ahead and just cut the end of it, and this is gonna become one of the fringe pieces. I like to cut the cords down a bit before brushing it out, and to create some fringe, I'm using a pep brush to brush it all out. After that, you can go ahead and clean it and just make it even throughout the whole coaster, so you can make this about an inch to an inch and a half wide. You can totally customize these and make these as long or as short as you'd like. And that's all there is to this project. Our coaster is now complete. Macrame coasters are such a great beginner project. They add such a cozy bohemian feel to any space. And not only are they super cute, but they're also functional. I really love the pattern that we created on this one. And there are so many other patterns and color combinations that you can create with macrame coasters. And if you'd like to, you can also create this at a larger scale to hang up as wall art. So you guys know that I started working on my website this year and I actually am currently building out a logo as well as a whole brand identity. So that's been a fun project to work behind the scenes and I cannot wait to put it all together, especially when I'm building out my website and just making everything come to life. I've actually been a user of Squarespace for years now, but this is the first time that I'm using it to build something of my own and it really is the easiest website builder I've ever used. Their templates are all so beautiful and Squarespace really makes it hard for you to choose one because I think they're all so good. Each one offers something a little bit different and Squarespace has all the tools that you need to sell your product or service, or you can use it to build a one-of-a-kind portfolio to help you stand out from the crowd. They have so many great tools on the back end, including blogging, website analytics, and checkout or scheduling appointments. And if you guys are interested, make sure that you click on the link down below and use my special discount code to get 10% off of your first website or domain. So that's my little website update for now, and let's go ahead and jump into the next project. So if you guys have ever bought a hanging plant from the store, it usually comes with one of these plastic hangers. And these are super functional, but they're not very cute. So I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to make it look more stylish. The first thing we're doing is just removing the plastic hanger. And I found this to be pretty easy and you can just pull them off. Then we're gonna cover the hook part and all I'm doing is just using some hot glue to wrap the macrame really tightly around. I'm adding a little dab of glue after I wrap it around a couple of times and I'm also making sure that I hold it down and let the glue cool down so that it doesn't unravel. And we're just gonna continue gluing until we get all the way down to the bottom. And when you're done, you could just cut it off and then use a little bit of hot glue to smooth out the edges. So I noticed that some of the glue has built up in between the cords and that's just because I had too much. So what I like to do is just to use the hot tip of the glue gun to touch it and melt it down. So here you'll see that I'm not squeezing it at all, I'm just using it to melt it down and this is such a great trick for any project to clean it up a little bit. All right, so it's time to cover up the rest of this hanger. So I'm just gonna cut out my macrame cord and this is gonna be about six to eight times the length of the hanger. I always like to be cautious and cut out more than I think that I need because it's always the worst when you're doing all of these knots and then you realize that you don't have enough material to finish the project. I've done that a couple times now and I've learned my lesson, so always make sure that you cut a little bit more. So now I'm just taking one of the cords and I'm gonna fold that in half and then tie it around one of the plastic hangers. And I also like to glue it at the top just so that it doesn't move around as I'm working on it. So now we're gonna go ahead and do a spiral knot and all I'm doing is creating a number four with the cord on the left. Then I'm taking the cord on the right and I'm gonna put that over the left cord. Now I'm bringing that underneath and through the loop of the four and then we're just gonna pull upwards. So this is our first knot and that's all there is to it. All you have to do is to repeat it and that is the only knot that we're doing for this whole project. 
So you'll notice that as you're doing the knot, it's gonna start spiraling, which is where it gets its name from. And as I was working on it, I just kind of flipped it back and forth as the knot spiraled. And this knot is basically like doing a square knot, but you're only doing the first half of the knot over and over again. So instead of having four cords, we're basically using the plastic part to act as our middle cords that we're wrapping the knot around. And the tighter that you make the knots, the more spiraling that you're gonna get. So it's really all up to your preference. Once I'm about halfway through, I like to pull it out a bit just to stretch the spiral. And that way you don't have to do as many knots and use less macrame. Once we get down to the bottom, all we have to do is to snip off the ends and then use a little bit more hot glue to smooth it all out and this looks super seamless. And now we just have two more of these to do and this method is super easy and goes by pretty quickly since the knot is very simple. I also wanted to mention that I'm using 3mm macrame cord for this project and I found that to be the perfect size. And to be honest, I kind of just discovered this method by experimenting around with it. But if you guys have seen other projects to cover plastic hangers, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. You could also just remove the hanger entirely and create a new hanger out of macrame and attach it on. But this method avoids the plastic hanger from ending up in a landfill or a recycling bin. And I also just really like this method because you can use less macrame and it holds the shape really nicely. And after I finish all of these, I just attached it back to the planter, but of course there's so many different things that you could do with this project. You could wrap the pot in macrame to make it look more cohesive, or you could spray paint it and decorate it, but I really just like the color of the pot, so I left it as is. This project was a super quick and easy way to add a boho touch to your plastic hanging pots. Your plants are going to look so much cuter in these and I can't stop doing this method to all of my hanging pots. I hope that you guys found this tutorial to be helpful and now we can all display our trilling plants together in style. For this last project, we're starting off with a 10 inch hoop and I'm creating the base of the wreath with some dried pompous grass and I could not find my wire anywhere so I ended up just using some twine to tie it to the wreath. And to keep some of the pieces in place with the curved shape, I ended up adding in a small bead of hot glue. I then used some dried florals that I had on hand to add some interest and this bunny tail is just perfect because it's a little bit darker in color which matches really well with the pompous grass. Then for some contrast I added in some lighter dried florals and with these you can kind of just tuck them in and then glue wherever it's needed. I have so many dried florals in my DIY stash so this was a fun project to use them for. If you guys have any other project ideas that I can use with dried florals please leave them down in the comments. I have so many left and I'm not sure what to do with them. I just added these in until it felt balanced and then we're ready to start our macrame. So here I'm using four millimeter macrame and I measured out quite a bit of this. In the end, I had about 110 to 120 inches of the macrame and then I just tied it around the hoop. And as I was knotting it, I made sure that it covered the bottom of the pompous grass and this is such a great way just to conceal it. And then all we're doing is the same as the last project. We're doing a spiral knot all around the hoop. So I'm creating a four with the cord on the left and then taking the cord on the right, crossing it over and then bringing it under and through the loop. And we're just gonna repeat this all the way until we meet the other side of the pompous grass. And it's important to remember that with this knot, you're starting with the same cord every single time. So there's no switching back and forth between the left or the right cord. You're always gonna start the knot with the left cord to get the spiral look. Adding on the macrame creates a softer look to the wreath. The gold metal looked great and gave it more of a modern and minimal look. So depending on the vibe that you're going for, you can add the macrame or leave it as is. And I love creating a good wreath because you can just switch them out for every season or holiday. And this is such a fun project idea, especially if you're looking to create something with your macrame aside from plant hangers or wall hangings, and it's super simple to do. Once I got to the end, I just snipped off the cord and I'm using a small dab of glue to conceal the loose end and keep it in place. 
Our macrame wreath came out super cute and I can totally imagine this over a bed or in a nursery. It gives off such a soft boho vibe and it was so quick and easy to create. And I hope this project gave you some ideas on how you can add macrame to your wreaths for future projects. So those are all the projects from today's video. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. I really hope that you guys like the plant hanger one because those are usually not that cute, but this is a quick and easy way just to make it a little bit more stylish. And it's one of my favorite new hacks to do because I've done it three times now to all my pots. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you guys wanna check them out and get 10% off of your first website or domain, make sure that you click on the link down below in my description box. If you guys got any inspo or recreate any of the projects from today's video, make sure that you tag me on Instagram so that that I can see it and like it and leave some love. And as always, here are a few recreations here on the screen. You guys seriously make my day whenever you tag me in them. And I wanna thank you guys for always sharing your creativity and just DMing me and leaving me nice comments. It's always the best part of my day. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.